Hello everyone, it's good to be back on another episode of the All You Need Is A Ball podcast. Today I'm with the one and only Brynja Fagerli from Norway. Brynja, what's up man? I'm good, thanks. You? Yes, yes, I'm doing great, I'm doing great. You know, before this podcast I was thinking, is there a good way to introduce you? Because I find it pretty tricky because for the people that don't know who you are, you and your brother have basically dominated the freestyle scene for the last six to eight years. So. It is a bit, well, first of all, how does that feel when I say that? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's uh, true, I guess. Uh, it's uh, like in 2016, that was uh, what I consider our breakthrough year, yes. where we really started to perform at the highest level in freestyle. So it has been really exciting. Yes, yes. And then I was thinking, maybe I can compare you guys to some other athlete in some <laughs> sport. But for me, the most accurate is if, if like, like Roger Federer and Nadal would play in the same team, something like that. <laughs> Does it feel like, I mean, I don't know if you're Federer or Nadal, but... Um... Well, uh, I would say maybe Alan is uh, a bit better in, than me in terms of what he has achieved in terms of the like uh, first places in the competitions. But mm -hmm. uh, level-wise, I think we are not that far apart. Yes, I, I, I think so too. And I think, I mean, we can get a bit later into that, but I think there's a, been a few moments where I actually thought, oh, definitely Brynja is going to win the world title this year. Uh -huh. You thought the same, maybe? Yeah, I have, have had uh, that as a goal several years, and uh, I have uh, had uh, faith that I could reach it, but uh, there has always been something that uh, was in the way. A certain person. <laughs> yeah, that's a true. A certain that's person. True. Well, we get into that later on. But... Um, you recently announced on social media that you actually are going to stop competing. Yes. So the end is near. It is. So uh, my last competition will be uh, this Red Bulls Street Style on Saturday. Yes. And when was your first competition? When did you ever work? That was the Red Bull Street Style in Norway in 2009. I think it was September 2009. Was that the final against Tobias? No, no. I, I, I think I went out against uh, Mats in top oh, 8. Oh, Mats. Mats. Uh, yes. Yeah. I remember him. That's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, so how did you come to this decision? Because you said you're going to stop competing. Do yes. By the way, does that mean you're going to stop competing in everything, even double routine and things like that, or just battles? I think that I'm going to stop competing in everything, uh, actually. Uh, oh. So it has been a... Uh, That's uh, such a pity. Why not just do double routines <laughs> at Super Bowl? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's been a tough decision, but uh, I feel like I have to go all into something if I want to keep on doing it. Yes. And it's been an overall decision, like it's been uh, based on many, several, uh, like several factors. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was uh, basically a decision that I made this winter. Uh, but it's not because you don't see the fun of it anymore? No, it's not. Uh, I still think it's really fun and uh, I... I also feel like I'm at my best shape. Yes. So it's not because of that. Uh, so uh, yeah, to to tell the reasons for it is a bit difficult. Yes. Uh, but uh, a big part of it is actually due to my like uh, academic career as well. Yes. Because I've been studying at the university the past seven years to become yes. an electric power engineer. Mm -hmm. And uh, doing the studies while uh, doing freestyle full time, that really worked because I took the studies over um, more years. Yes, so you spread out your studies a bit. Yes, more. I did. Yeah. <laughs> so it's actually a master's, but I so that's five years, but I studied for seven years, so that made it possible. But uh, now that I'm finished with my studies, I have to make a decision: Do I want to keep competing? And if so, how? What should I do besides it? Yes. Uh, and um, what I uh, came to choose between I had to I had a little dilemma I <laughs> I thought uh, if I want to do a full-time job then I can't uh, that is not compatible with doing uh, freestyle full-time yes but I had another option which yes. is doing a PhD in electric power engineering I thought that could be more compatible with uh, doing yes. competitions because mm -hmm. then I can uh, structure my day the way, the way I want it mm -hmm. so I was really considering doing that as well but in the end, I, I thought that doing a full-time job was uh, what I wanted to do. And uh, then I decided that I will stop competing because I, I don't think I'm able to do a full-time job and do a freestyle uh, yes, uh, full-time as well. Because I think I have to sacrifice too much for that and I don't get enough rest and I, and I have to use all my spare time. I'm also married and we will probably buy a house 
soon uh, yes. and, and uh, build the house I'm in. Yeah, so, so then you have to stand on the roof and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I have a lot of responsibilities and obligations that I feel is not compatible with yes. doing full-time freestyle at this time. And so, that's my choice though. Yeah, no, it makes sense and I respect it, but you know, we're gonna miss you, man. So I, I almost want to talk you out of it, but <laughs> when you explain it like that, uh, it totally makes sense. But, but the fact that you announced that you're gonna retire in competition, does it? Does that motivate you to do well in this competition now coming up, or does it give extra pressure? How does it feel? I would I would say both of them. Yes. I I have felt uh, more motivation than ever almost yes. for for doing well in this competition. So mm -hmm. leading up to it, I have been really motivated and training hard. Uh, but I think also I feel a bit more pressure since it is my last competition, and yes. also like uh, uh, it's my last. Uh, um, chance to do like a really well in this in this competition yes uh but on the other hand i i just feel uh, lucky to be able to be in that spot to be able to perform in rebel street style one more time uh, yes because it's not uh, obvious that i can finish so. with a bang yeah hopefully <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. So you actually mentioned one uh, word before, like one minute ago, you, you said structured. And I want to get a little bit more into this because I think we've talked about this before in a different interview once, that I think it seems like this, that you guys, both you and your brother, like structured, that seems like a thing. Mm -hmm. Like when, when I look at how you guys prepare for tournaments, how you, the way you guys talk, the way you ask for information, it seems like you analyze everything you do and put some style of structure into everything, basically. Is, is that a good observation or? Yeah, I think we are more structured than the average freestyler, maybe. I know uh, you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think that has helped us uh, to perform well. Well, like the average day is quite stru structured for us since yes. we do our studies and we train twice a day, five to six days a week. Mm -hmm. So we, in order to make that work, we have to have some kind of structure. Um, okay, so let, let, let's go yeah. back, back one step. Okay, let's say Red Bull Street Cells coming up. Yeah. There's two months to go. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the plan? How does it? Because everyone always wants, because everyone always says, yeah, the Fogley brothers, they found the recipe of winning, <laughs> right? And I'm not so interested in that because if it was so easy, everyone would do it. <laughs> so that's not the, the idea. But I just want to have an idea of how, how does that work? What's the plan then? So the plan two week now two months before. Yeah, let's say the two months one more. Like, yeah. like, what's the idea? You, you're retiring anyway. You can give <laughs> away true. the secrets now. <laughs> well, uh, it's not really. Because it's, it's not just practicing. We don't, we don't do so much uh, special things two yes. months before, but we try to get a good overview of our tricks, the tricks that we want to do in the competition, mm -hmm. and we we only focus on those before the competition and don't uh, focus on other tricks. And we try to just practice those tricks as much as possible and uh, also focusing quite a lot on uh, battle training. So, yes. So we're, we are battling each other on the training. But that sounds so weird for me because your brother is not only maybe your best friend and your brother, but it's also your biggest competitor. It is. But uh, how is that dynamic? I mean, that, that must be really double. <laughs> yes, that's true. but. Uh, it's okay, it's just a training, so it's not like uh, we get... Uh, well, is it, is, we... it, is it just a training? <laughs> That's the question. Well, it, sometimes we just we, we battle, but we don't really necessarily battle each other. We just practice on having uh, like 3 times 30 second rounds. Yes. And, uh, it's not like we always think who won this battle between us. Yes. We rather think, did we do well in the, in the battle? And yes. that's a win in itself. So that means that we're getting better at the... Do you record situation. it and analyze it? Yeah, we do. So uh, we can look back at our battles and see what works and what doesn't. Yes. So structured again there. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's nice. And um, but but shouldn't you sometimes think like I should take a break from Ireland for like a month to do my own <laughs> thing before competition? No, I don't really. Uh, I uh, I really get so much energy and motivation from training with him, mm -hmm. uh, especially the past. Uh, I don't know. Three years, I feel like uh, I'm not as self-driven as I was before. Mm -hmm. Before that, uh, so uh, as in I want to win, I want to win like that, or yeah, and on the like the training set session itself, okay. I feel like mm -hmm. uh, I'm much more uh, motivated in the session to perform on the training session if I'm training with others yes, and yes. with Alan. So training by myself, I need uh, some. I don't know. It's it's harder to it's get harder. motivation. 
No, I mean, I, even I recognize that the reason I kind of stopped training on a high level was because I couldn't be motivated anymore to train by myself, you know, like in the garage or yeah. I still enjoy training at meets and things like that and have fun. Mm. But by yourself, it's more difficult. It is. But it is, sounds... is that also the reason behind your guys' success that you always have someone to train with? I think that's a big part of it, yes, yes. for sure, uh, that we have uh, almost always throughout our career been able to train with each other and uh, push, push, it, push each other. Yes. It's been really important, I think. But is it, I mean, you have to be honest now, do you also sometimes think like, you know, oh no, he won again, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I never think that, that I'm uh, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy for him winning. Yes. It's more like I, I also would uh, like to do the same. Yes. So it's better than he win that he wins than anyone else. But uh, yes, I, sometimes I feel like yeah, oh, it would be nice to also be in the same situation sometime. But uh, yes. But I don't really feel jealous. No, no, no. I don't. No. It's uh, I'm more happy for him. Like it's uh, his success is uh, also my success in a way because we're like the Fabio brothers and uh, yes, and uh, that has. Uh, well, that's my next really question: cool. the Fogli brothers, but. Is he gonna change like his Instagram to like Erlen Fargali freestyle <laughs> now, or will be still the Fargali so. brothers? Uh, even though I will stop competing, it, it does that doesn't mean I will stop posting and, uh, and, and performing and, and, yeah. and yeah. So you, you will still freestyle a little bit. I will still train and I will still freestyle. Yes, but more as as a hobby thing. Yeah. Yeah, I will uh, just train as much as I want to and. Uh, well, I maybe don't. you can push your creativity even more when you stop competing. Yeah, maybe. I'll just do whatever I feel like doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so. I think in general that's always a good idea anyway. Yeah, that's true. But uh, like the past eight years, we have uh, been very like uh, disciplined. We have to train like mm -hmm. twice a day, five to six days a week. And uh, you're not always motivated. So. Yes. No, I actually, I just wanted to ask that. Did you ever had a phase like a, where for a few months or like where you're like... Ugh. Yeah, sure. We have uh, had some uh, some moments where we we haven't been motivated that much, but uh, then we look at the overall goal, and that has helped a lot. And um, and also having each other. So we have all we have never been so unmotivated that we have stopped training for like a long time. Yeah, yes, yes. But uh, yeah. Cool. So can you tell us a little bit like how how did you guys grow up? Like I mean, you grew up in a village in Norway, or? Yeah, quite a small village called Svorkmo. <laughs> yeah, how, how's it called? Svorkmo. That it's sounds a, pretty cool. Does it mean anything? <laughs> oh, what does it mean? It's uh, called up after like a river uh, oh, or okay. something. Yeah. Uh, and I saw on documentaries like on the hill, like the house. Yeah, where yeah. We, exactly where we live. It's uh, it has a quite a nice view, and it's uh, quite far from the closest neighbor. So it's not even in the village. It's it's. No, it's a bit like, outside the village. Yeah, a bit yeah. outside the small village. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically just a house on top of the hill. Yeah, so you can say that. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but wasn't it like boring when you grew up, or? Well, we, I don't think so. But no. we, if we wanted to meet friends, we had to like be. Uh, our parents had to drive us to. Yeah, them, you have to so it arrange was, it. Really. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit more cumbersome that way. You can just walk over the street and meet friends. Yeah. So. Uh, so it made um, uh, made it a bit more difficult to meet people, but they would always drive us if you wanted to do. Do that. you think that growing up like that shaped you as a freestyler in, in any way? Uh, yeah, I, like I mean, the first years when you started freestyle, it, it was really uh, something to do on the top of that <laughs> mountain. Yeah, but that, <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, did it kind of start because there was nothing else to do? Well. I, I'm not sure if that's uh, the right uh, like uh, reason for why we started, mm -hmm. but uh, it certainly it was. Uh, but to tell us how, how did it start? Like, was it you first, then Erland, or did you together? Or? We started the same day uh, yeah. in May two thousand nine when we were looking like on YouTube. We were looking for like a, a, another hobby. Yes. We were still still doing football and other activities, but we were like eager to find something new. Mm -hmm. And then we discovered freestyle, and uh, we were like so uh, uh, interested in it, and it was so fascinating. So you saw it on on YouTube or something? Yes. Or, yeah. It was the, Do you remember who it was? Uh, especially the video of Tosani was uh, yes. one of the first we. Tosani part one. Yeah, yeah. I think it was. <laughs> yeah, with the cool music and everything. Yes. Yeah. And then we started right away. But did you straight away started to train really hard, or was it just sometimes after football? Or just we. 
we right away started really training a lot. <laughs> like yeah. the first half year, we we didn't do much else on our spare time. And that was like 2009, you said. Yes. Yeah. Like that summer, that first summer vacation, we trained all day. Like it was our biggest passion ever. <laughs> yes, I remember that blooper video. Was that around that time? Or? Yes, it was. I was no milk today. Yeah. Oh, exactly. it was such a funny video. <laughs> Yes, and, and and how long was it before you met other freestylers? Because I cannot imagine there's anyone else in the in the area. That's true. We the first time we met other freestyler freestylers was in the Red Bull. Uh, oh really? So, so you went from practicing, practicing, practicing to yes, straight to your first competition. No meets or whatever. No. So after like how long time was it? Six months. Yeah. We met our first freestylers, that, and then then we met the freestyle community of Norway. It was really cool. Nice, nice, nice. And and what, what, do you remember what kind of tricks were you doing back then? Lowers? Yeah, I mostly lowers, but also some sit downs and uh, and uppers actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the first few months it was mostly lowers. And I think nowadays you guys are very you have a lot of signature moves and things like that. So, and when did the creation of kind of your own tricks and style? When, when did that happen? Uh, it's hard to say. Yeah, I know, uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, year, but maybe like. Uh, at least from 2015 and on, then we really started to get specialized on our own style. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but and I think even was that think... because you had some kind of ambition to to win something, or was it more a natural thing? Like, okay, I've done the basics now. Now mm. it's more, you know, like a natural flow kind of thing. Uh, well, it was in 2014 that we decided that we wanted to try to become as good as possible and try to become world champions. But it was an actual decision. Yeah. Like you talked about it and... Yes, well, yeah it was. That's so interesting, because I, I think for most people it doesn't work like that. No, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, it was like that for us. We, it was in 2014, I remember. We, mm -hmm. like, yeah, we were like reading a book about becoming the best and we were really inspired. Oh really? Yeah. Well, what kind of book was that? <laughs> It was uh, like a popular Norwegian book, uh, which was called like, actually "Become the Best." <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> but but okay, it, I'm it gonna I'm gonna look this up. Yeah, this but cool. uh, I don't know. It it wasn't only because of that book, but that was like a a, a source of inspiration for us at least, and uh, we also saw that we did really well on the Super Bowl 2013. Yes. So we saw that. What was the result there? I can't remember. I came top eight and. Oh. Uh, Alan top 32 so we saw that we had a big potential and then we we decided well, which year was it when you I think there was one year when you reached the finals of Norwegian championship when you lost against the bias yes that was 2012 that was 2012 yeah. yes that's right so that also like showed that we I think we saw that there, there were huge potential in the uh, competitions like in doing all round for, for instance mm -hmm. we saw that uh, people have been pushing lowers a lot but yes. that uh, all round and transitions there was a lot more to do and yeah it was uh, more separate categories right yeah it that was yeah. so we i think we noticed that early on and then we decided let's go all in on that and also lowers so just become a complete complete free freestylers and nice, maybe that nice. will take us far <laughs> nice 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 and then you guys also got really into the double routine thing, which I think is, is so cool to watch. <laughs> I remember I was watching the, um, I don't know which one it was, but uh, when you were doing this with the hands, yeah. what, what year did you into, I mean, this is a podcast, people can't see the hand thing. But <laughs> I don't know which year that was, but I was like getting really goosebumps and oh, I loved oh. it so much. Man. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. That was 2016. Yeah. They really prepared a lot for that one. But isn't it difficult to prepare for so many different things? Because now Erland is even in SIG 3 and things like that, and <laughs> show flow, and uh, like, isn't it hard to prepare different? Yeah, it is, but uh, we are really motivated. You do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was really fun to prepare for it. And uh, like, we have an obvious uh, advantage in dog routine, being that we live together yes, and uh, yes. like training all the time together. So, and that's not, every participant in double dog routine doesn't do that. So. I mean, no one. No, so, no. so we, we was able to do a lot of planning. Yes. Not just when we train, but like outside training, we could like plan the choreography and uh, the music and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And okay, well, actually we didn't go too deep into it, but let's say preparation for a tournament. Uh, do you, because uh, you once told me about this trick, uh, not the trick, but the rule about new tricks, mm -hmm. and you can't use them against each How does that work? It works. Uh, such that uh, if I invent a trick, then yes. 
Alan can't do that trick in a competition before I have showed it because mm -hmm. the value of that new trick will decrease drastically after showing it the first time. Yes. So uh, yeah, that's the rule. So that uh, so having that rule, then we can train with each other and show every trick, every trick, knowing that the other one will not use it before you. <laughs> Did someone ever break the rule? No, I don't think so. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> that would be a bit. That would be an upset, I would say. Yeah, that's uh, true. Like maybe you won't show it on stage, but you will have a talk with him later on at night. Yeah, uh, true. Um. So now you're gonna retire, right? So, do you think Erland? Because I thought about this a lot. Do you think Erland will lose his motivation when you're not competing? Right? Because I think he will. I also thought that he would uh, lose some uh, motivation, but. Mm -hmm. Considering that actually the top four in Norway lives in Trondheim now, yes. So uh, not just me and Erland, but also Sigve and Sindre. Yes. He can train with them every day almost. Yes. So so he has some training partners there, and also considering that I will also join a lot of the training sessions, I think he will yeah. still be motivated considering that, and also he's uh, he's still really uh, like eager to st still compete. So I think he, that, he's that not going to have a problem. That amazes me. I mean, I, I don't want to talk too much about your brother, but for me, it's insane that he has won. I don't know how many I lost count. They well, don't, they don't even fit on the Instagram bio anymore. No, that's true. Like six, seven world titles or whatever. Or it's eight. Eight, eight world with, titles. With Super Bowl and Rebel. Yeah. yeah. And, but he still seems every time like, oh, I'm going to take this. How, how, how does that work with him? Well, I... I I don't think it's all about the titles for him, it's more like uh, he's really psyched about uh, just developing like, uh, and he still does, it's like he's taking so big steps every year Yes. and uh, I think that's so motivational for him, it is for me as well seeing him, Yes. so uh, I think he's just hooked on uh, development and... Uh, hooked on development, that's yeah. a good quote, man. I like <laughs> it, hooked, hooked on development. So. Um, Okay, so your last tournament now. Mm. I mean, what do you think is gonna happen? You think you're gonna take it this year? Uh, I, uh, you must believe <laughs> it. Otherwise, <laughs> I, I can I, I of course think that's uh, uh, it's a it's a big chance that that can, that can happen. Yes. Uh, but it depends on many factors, like how will the battle structure be, and uh, if I'm, I have a good day. But uh, yes, I have. Yeah, I have, it depends uh, on the draw and everything. Yeah, it does. But uh, yes, for sure, I can win. Yeah. Okay. So let's say it's you against your brother in the final. <laughs> he knows it's your last tournament. Yeah. So did you guys talk about this? Yes, and I have told him you you, you have, you have to give everything. Yes, yes. I don't want you to make me win. That uh, that's not a fair way of winning. I no. need to win because I deserve it. So. Yeah, because I was thinking about that. Like if yeah. you guys, do, well, maybe he will let you win. Yeah. No. He's not allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You probably, if you actually uh, notice that, you probably get even more upset. Yeah, true. If you would, if, if you would find out on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we're more like we think it's so much cooler to do like a really cool battle. The, the result is uh, not necessarily the most important for us. Mm -hmm. We think it's so cool to just have a like a really high level battle. That's. Uh, that's even maybe yes. more important than the result. <laughs> but do you prefer a final against uh, Erland or do you prefer a final against more like a Boyka, yes or whatever? I, for me, the dream is to meet uh, Erland in the final, yeah, I must say. <laughs> so how is that for your parents? Because I met your parents down in the lobby and they're all supportive and all that. Is that weird for them as well? Like, because sometimes, like, let's say if you win, like when you won yeah. the, the Euros or whatever, and then, uh, you know, Mm. How does that work for them? It's like there's always one disappointing one. Yeah, that's not, not disappointing, disappointed one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I think they they would maybe prefer that it was more equal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that, uh, that we got more. Five world titles each. <laughs> yeah. At least mom. She's yeah. like, uh, she feels uh, sometimes a bit uh, like sad for me. Yes. That, uh, that, uh, that it's all, always uh, Alan and not me. But, uh, but they are, of course, happy for him. Yes. Also nothing about that, but uh, yeah, as parents, they they like. Yeah, I mean, you love want... your children equally much, and yeah, you want the best exactly. for both of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. <laughs> so, so okay, as a last like chapter, I, I would like to know where do you think the possibilities are in freestyle? Because do you see certain areas that you think, oh, we have so much to explore in this area? You mean tricks wise? Or tricks wise, yeah. 
Yeah, I think there are so much more possibilities. We we see evidence of it of it every year, like mm -hmm. people exploring different parts of freestyle, like, and you, it's hard to predict what uh, tricks that will be, but mm -hmm. uh, people keep showing up with new styles and new tricks. So I think there are so much more possibilities still. Nice. And so your last tournament, do you got any new stuff? I got some new stuff, but uh, I have also been uh, trying to be more focusing on consistency and uh, difficulty, considering the criteria, since there is uh, one judge for each criterion, and yes. orig originality is one of the criteria, so if you win that criteria, then you don't necessarily win the battle, so it, it's a bit like a tactical thing there, yes. so I'm, uh, I've been actually more focusing on getting my best tricks really consistent, consistent. and sharp. Yes. And I think, uh, like, if I look back at the recent years, the reason why you lost certain battles was because of the drops. Mm. I think. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think you always had the tricks. It's yeah. just that sometimes you dropped it on the, exactly. you know, the toe bounce heel variations or yeah. just too hard stuff. That's true. So I've been trying to get that more consistent. That's Perfect. Good, well, it will be your last tournament, mm. and. I hope you're gonna win. Man. I <laughs> hope you're gonna win, and I don't think I've ever said this out publicly, but you are my favorite freestyler. So um, That's cool. <laughs> I, I wish you all the best, and uh, thank you for talking to me, and uh, good luck. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.